Hello there. In this video, let's understand the micturation reflex. The micturation reflex is a spinal reflex, but remember that in young children as well as in adults, it is under the voluntary control. And this voluntary control is coming from the higher centers like the cerebral cortex and the pons. In order to understand the micturation reflex, we have to first understand the innervation of the bladder. Remember that the bladder is innervated by three sets of nerves. The first one is arising from T12, L1, L2 and L3. This is called as the thoracolumbar component from which the sympathetic outflow is going to the urinary bladder via these nerves which are called as the hypogastric nerves. The second group of nerves are arising from the second as well as the third group of nerves. Both of them they arise from the segments S2, S3 and S4 called as the sacral segment of the spinal cord. So from here we are getting the parasympathetic outflow via the pelvic nerve and we are also getting the somatic outflow which is coming from the pudendal nerve. Remember that urinary bladder, the wall of the urinary bladder has got a smooth muscle and the name of that muscle is the detrusor muscle. Now at the neck of the bladder, we have a sphincter which is called as the internal urethral sphincter and distally we have one more sphincter which is called as the external urethral sphincter. So now let's understand what happens when there is a sympathetic stimulation, parasympathetic stimulation and the somatic nervous system stimulation. So whenever there is sympathetic stimulation, these sympathetic nerves which are being uh, supplied to the bladder by the hypogastric nerves, they are going to cause relaxation of the detrusor muscle and they cause contraction of the internal urethral sphincter. And whenever there is stimulation of the parasympathetic nerves via the pelvic nerve, which are arising from S2, S3 and S4 segments of the spinal cord, they are going to cause contraction of the detrusor muscle and relaxation of the internal urethral sphincter. And remember that these pelvic nerves which are there, they also act like the afferent nerve, that is they carry the stretch sensation from the urinary bladder whenever the bladder is filling or it is full. And then what is going to happen when there is pudendal nerve stimulation? Pudendal nerve stimulation is going to cause contraction of external urethral sphincter. Apart from this, we should also remember that there are higher centers which are concerned with the voluntary control of bladder. These are present in the pons and they are also present in the cerebral cortex. Remember that in the pons there are two centers. One is called as a storage center. Another one is called as the micturation center. Now whatever information is coming to the sacral part of the spinal cord via the pelvic nerve, that information is going to ascend up to the thoracolumbar region and it also is conveyed to the pontine center as well as to the cerebral cortex. Now it is the cerebral cortex which is going to ultimately decide whether a person can urinate or not, whether a person can wide the urine or not depending upon the time and the place. If the time and the place are not apt then the cerebral cortex is not allowing the person to urinate by keeping the external urethral sphincter contracted all the time. And if the cerebral cortex thinks that yes the time and place for urination is apt then the cerebral cortex sends the impulses down and it makes sure that the pudendal nerve is inhibited because of which the external urethral sphincter is relaxed and that is going to cause widening of the urine. Okay, this is an overview of innovation of the bladder. So there are two phases in micturation. The first phase is what is called as the filling phase. This is when the bladder is empty and it has begun to just fill. That means there is very little amount of urine present in the bladder here. So now because there is no much urine in the bladder, the first point that we should write in our exam here is that, that there is no stretching of the bladder which is occurring. So when there is no stretching of the bladder, the stretch receptors are less activated, okay? Because of which the impulses which is arising from the afferent nerve. Now, what are the afferent nerves here? They are the pelvic nerves. And where do they convey the impulse? They convey the impulse to S2, S3 and S4 part of the spinal cord. So the impulses which are arising in the afferent nerves are very less. So this information is conveyed to S2, S3 and S4 part of the spinal cord, which is the sacral part. Now, from here, the information goes to two sides. First, it goes to the thoracolumbar part of the spinal cord, which is concerned with the sympathetic outflow to the urinary bladder. So, because the impulses in the afferent nerves are less, what is going to happen is, there is going to be stimulation of the sympathetic outflow. This is one thing which occurs. Simultaneously, there is also information going to the pons. And in the pons, I have already told you that there are two centers. One is called as a micturation center. Another one is called as a storage center. Now, because the impulses in the afferent nerves are less telling me that the bladder is still empty and there is no enough amount of urine so what happens in the pons is there is stimulation of the storage center so one side there is stimulation of the sympathetic outflow another side there is stimulation of the storage center so when there is stimulation of the storage center the storage center is also going to cause stimulation of the sympathetic outflow okay this is the one thing which occurs so whenever there is stimulation of the sympathetic outflow what i told the sympathetic nervous system does to the urinary bladder it is going to cause relaxation of which muscle a smooth muscle which is called as the detrusor muscle second thing it causes is it is going to cause contraction of internal urethral sphincter. So relaxation of the detrusor muscle is very much essential for the filling of the bladder and contraction of the IUS is also very important so that the bladder is filled and there is no leaking of the urine from the urinary bladder. Not only that, the storage center, 
does the second thing. What it does is it is going to cause inhibition of the parasympathetic outflow. Now, when there is inhibition of the parasympathetic outflow, again, the same two things are going to take place. One, there is a relaxation of the detrusor muscle. And second thing, there is contraction of the internal urinary sphincter. The third thing what the storage center is going to do is it is going to cause stimulation of what? Somatic outflow. Okay, it's going to cause stimulation of the somatic outflow. This is occurring via the pudendal nerve. And what did I say that the somatic nervous system is going to do? It is also going to cause the contraction of external urinary, external urethral sphincter. So because of which the urine is not wired, allowing the bladder to completely fill. So this is the filling phase. Followed by the filling phase, what is going to occur? There has to be widening of the urine once the urinary bladder is filled. Let's say the urinary bladder is filled with about 300 to 400 ml of urine or even more than that. Then what is going to occur? The wall of the bladder will be stretched. When the wall of the bladder is stretched, the stretch receptors are going to get stretched and that is going to get stimulated. So when the stretch receptors are stimulated, there is going to be stimulation of the afferent nerve. This information is now conveyed to the sacral part of the spinal cord that is S2, S3 and S4. So what are the afferent nerve? Let's not forget the afferent nerve. The afferent nerve are nothing but the pelvic nerves. Remember that the pelvic nerves are acting both as afferent nerves as well as they are the one which are conveying the parasympathetic outflow from the spinal cord to the bladder. So now this information has come to the sacral part of the spinal cord. Now what is going to happen is via the efferents, okay, via the efferents, again the efferents are going to come from the pelvic nerve, there is going to be stimulation of the parasympathetic outflow. One thing which occurs is this. So whenever there is stimulation of the parasympathetic outflow, what are the two things that are going to occur? One thing which occurs is there is going to be contraction of which muscle? There is going to be contraction of detrusor muscle. One thing which occurs is this. Second thing which occurs is there is going to be relaxation of which sphincter? There is going to be relaxation of internal urethral sphincter. So when there is contraction of the detrusor with relaxation of internal urethral sphincter, the urine now starts entering into the urethra. But the external urethral sphincter is not going to open. Why? Because this information is also conveyed to the cerebral cortex. And now if the cerebral cortex thinks that yes, the time and place for micturation or urination is correct, then this information goes to the pons. And it is going to stimulate the micturation center and inhibit the storage center in the pons. MC means micturation center. So when there is stimulation of the micturation center, it is also going to cause stimulation of again the parasympathetic outflow to the bladder and again there is going to be contraction of detrusor muscle and relaxation of the internal urethral sphincter. One thing to occur is that. Second thing to occur is it is going to cause inhibition of the sympathetic outflow to the bladder. So when there is inhibition, there is no relaxation of the detrusor muscle and there is no contraction of the internal urethral sphincter. And the third and the most important thing what happens because of the stimulation of the micturation center is there is going to be inhibition of somatic outflow. There is going to be the inhibition of somatic outflow to which structure? To the external urethral sphincter. So when there is inhibition of the somatic outflow to the external urethral sphincter, what is going to happen to the external urethral sphincter? The external urethral sphincter is going to relax. So when the external urethral sphincter relaxes, what is going to happen? There is going to be widening of urine or micturation is going to take place. So this is how you have to frame your answer if they are asking you regarding the micturation reflex. Let me know if you also want a video on system metrogram. If yes, then I'm going to record it soon and post it. Thank you for watching.